little a little less crazy so I'm still uh, fiddling with with camera parts trying to find something that works with my cell phone when I have a pop socket on the lower half and it's still very frustrating because on the top I have the volume button and then I have the on off button that's also high Bixby and then I have the pop socket on the other side and I still have not found a camera part built exactly for that kind of situation so I'm still like jerry-riggering jerry-riggering that's not a word jerry-rigging ways to try to like get around that but I actually just had the idea as I was setting it up that maybe VidCon I can um, walk the floor and find some kind of company that I could like pitch the idea to of making camera parts or you know tripod parts specifically for cases like mine where it needs to be deeper because the ones that you get that are meant for phones they're only like this wide and I need one that's like this wide <laughs> but anyway so uh, I'm wearing a wig um, I'm trying to get into the habit of wearing them just to get used to them it still feels weird like I want to like keep messing with it but of course you know especially if I don't have a mirror or camera available um, I'm probably gonna make it look bad um, I'm hoping it'll be something that I'll just like get used to um although I'm gonna have my hair freshly dyed anyway before I go there so maybe there's not even a point in bringing a wig um I finally got off my meet and greet list um, for VidCon I made it all the way through the whole list of watching at least you know a minute of content from each every single person on there um, like over half of them are tiktokers which makes sense because this VidCon is being um, sponsored by TikTok instead of YouTube. So obviously they're going to push a lot of TikTokers. And I don't know if there's a way to get TikTok to autoplay um, videos sequentially on desktop. Um, for me, I kept having to manually click through. I found out that at least my mouse wheel can um, make it go to the next one. But... Uh, I had them playing on one monitor while on the other monitor I was working on designs for the t-shirts which I bought material to make my own because I didn't like the cost or the shape of the ones that I found like at Target and Joanne and stuff and I haven't had a chance to go to a thrift store um, unfortunately <sighs> Link is downstairs watching TV right now um, he's sick again Yesterday, he developed a fever um, Monday night. Basically, as soon as he got home from school, because he went to school on Monday, he suddenly said his legs hurt and he developed a fever. And the fever was gone by Tuesday morning, but we're supposed to keep him for 24 hours from when the fever breaks. And over the course of Tuesday, he went from, like, feeling fine to saying his throat hurt and, like, all this other stuff. And then last night, he developed a fever again. And at 1 a.m., Aiden started yelling that Link needed help. I ran in there. Link had had diarrhea all over the floor and while I was helping him clean it up he threw up and I was just like ah um and I don't really have any like kid safe medicine for diarrhea all I can do is like encourage him to drink water and you know just be like I, I had my I have my mom's old potty that we bought for her um within the last month of when she was alive up here and she couldn't really make it to the bathroom and I leave that in their room for emergencies um but you know, um, the most frustrating thing about last night, Link was a, you know, he was a champ about it. Like he wasn't happy, but you know, he's really been maturing a lot. Um, he turned six in July. Um, he still does plenty of, you know, annoying kid things. Um, but compared to Aiden, Aiden is just, bleh. but yeah, so I got Link cleaned up and then Aiden would not go back to sleep. He was like, oh, one in the morning, perfect time to get up for the day. And I was just so fucking tired that I was like, I give up. So I got Link tucked back in, Aiden got his freaking iPad out, and I could see him on the baby monitor playing with his iPad, and I was just like, I'm too tired to care. Um, and then around 5, um, it was almost time, well it was like 5.30, and Matthew was about to get up for work anyway, and Aiden like heard him moving around, and so he like wanted to, to get up and walk around the living room, like the, the door was unlocked anyway, so I don't know why he didn't just do that, but, um, and at that point, he wanted snacks, I gave him snacks, and then like 10 seconds later he came into the bedroom with me and was like, I want to cuddle and eat snacks, and I'm like, okay, whatever. So <laughs> he gets into the big bed next to me, 
and I convinced him to put his his pop tarts on the table instead of having them in the bed and he curled up to me and he fell asleep which is amazing because normally when he wants to sleep in the bed with us both of them they'll move around and talk and just like not chill out but yeah he fell asleep and I managed to get him off to daycare before 10 which is the cutoff um, because I decided you know I might as well only deal with one kid um, and he was cheerful when I got him off so even though he only got like a three hour you know like 9 to 12 and then 5 to 9 um, amount of sleep 5 30 to 9 well 6 to 9 but anyway um, so yeah Link's downstairs he seems like he's doing okay now um, I've been encouraging him to like drink Pedialyte he's eating normally um, he only had the one yeah, accident last night so hopefully it was just a one and done and I feel bad for him because he has a field trip to the zoo on Friday and I'm hoping that he'll be well enough to go because he missed the last field trip which was going to be to a farm because he was sick then and I'm just like the kids cannot go a full week without one of them getting sick and it's driving me bonkers because before the mask mandates dropped you know they rarely got sick and Link especially and then since the mask mandates dropped they've just been getting one cold stomach virus blah 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 after another and like I've tested them for COVID for a couple of times with the rapid test, which I don't know how accurate they are, especially when you're dealing with a, a child that does not want to have the swab up their nose. Um, and they all came back negative. Um, we're like out of tests. I did, I did just read that the government will send you eight more tests. So I need to look into that. But again, the rapid test. So I'm like, eh. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm getting nervous because, you know, we have the trip literally like, what, three weeks away. <laughs> And we have five people. Five people need to not get sick <laughs> again for the next three weeks. And I did get insurance um, when I got the Amtrak tickets that say covered illness. You can get out of it if anyone in your group um, has uh, a covered illness with like a doctor's note. But I couldn't find cl clarification of what consi is considered a clear uh, the covered illness. So if it's just like a normal code and they're not in the ice cold, wow cold and they're not in the ICU is that not covered do they want us to go on the train and cough all over everybody like fucking Amtrak's a mess anyway so yeah I'm getting nervous about that um but I have been feeling fairly productive um I have finished about three or four designs for the t-shirt so far and then Thursday if I can if I'm not home taking care of Link I'm gonna go to my friend's house and we're gonna use his, his heat vinyl press thing and make a couple of test shirts and then if they're good um, maybe make a couple more I don't know we'll see how long they take um, the one that I sent over the first time was a cartoon drawing where half is like a male chest with like you know pecs and stuff and then the other one is a female chest with a breast and it says either brand all nipples or no nipples and I'm like debating how much I'm gonna have to cover for VidCon um, as I discussed in previous vlogs I'm gonna make like a little patch and I'm gonna sew it over all the offending parts so like on that shirt probably the word nipple probably the nipples themselves even though they're like a U um, I don't know but I was thinking that the patch I'll just sew the top line and then if people are curious, I can like lift the, <laughs> do a little peep show uh, of a fucking cartoon nipple that's just a U, because fascism. Um, and then the other one is the don't be a twit, don't be a twit, they're just tits. And it's got like little birds that I drew. And I had to simplify the birds a lot because um, with the vinyl press, um, the weeding, the taking out the parts that you don't want printed, um, gets really complicated if you have too many small parts. So hopefully the simplified version looks um, decent. I don't really like the way it looks, but you know, I <laughs> vectors are annoying. Um, and then the third one, so I, <laughs> so my original intent for it was to just draw two little cartoon nipples and then underneath it says, would you still be offended if I had a D apostrophe? And my point is that um, it doesn't, you know, again, topless equality, it doesn't matter what you identify as, only if YouTube thinks you have a dick or not, basically. Um, but I showed the design and one of my most vociferous, <laughs> um, longtime followers said that it seemed transphobic. And I was like, well, that is the opposite of what I'm intending. 
but so I, I workshopped it again and I came up with a couple different versions and I asked my followers, including, you know, I'm, I've been getting more trans followers um, because like one will follow me and then they have friends and they have friends. And so I was like, okay, well, which of these makes the, the point about, you know, t topless equality without being transphobic or without being perceived as transphobic. And the one that they seemed to like the most was the cartoon nipples. And then it says, if cartoon nipples on a woman offends you, you might be a misogynist. Um, another one that I liked was don't worry, they're male nipples. Cause I think it like makes the point of how silly it is and everything like that. Anyway. Um, and I'm still like accepting, you know, feedback or whatever. And like, it doesn't have to be those if you have an idea of like another funny thing. Like another one I thought of was like, don't be a noob. They're just boobs. And then it's like pictures of gaming controllers and stuff. I'm not in love with that one, but I'm like trying to think of alliterations, you know, where words have the same ending. Um, actually no alliteration is where it starts with the same, I think. I don't know. Anyway, rhymes. Um, they don't have to be rhymes, but I don't know. I think that's a more catchy. And I'm kicking myself because I had a, a drawing that I did a long time ago where I had like four or five of these phrases and I can't find the drawing anywhere. Should have written in my bujo. Speaking of, I did get a new, um, journal, um, that I'm going to try to like start fresh, um, maybe June 1st or something like that. Um, and go back to reliably keeping a bullet journal, which if you don't know about them, they're basically, instead of writing things on a million pieces of paper, you write everything in one book. And then at the end of the month, you're supposed to organize them and move them on to, you know, wherever you need that note to be. So you're just like writing everything down and it can be like dates. It can be ideas. It can be, you know, a random thing you learned, like whatever you want to put in it. And some people get like really fancy and they'll like do drawings and everything like that. I'm not so interested in that. Even though I'm an artist, <laughs> I'm not really that interested in like doing like all these little icons and everything. Um, it's almost like scrapbooking, which is like one of the art things that I have zero interest in. Um, although, you know, it would be nice to have printouts of all the pictures I've taken of my kids over the years. Uh, my dad actually has like eight or nine photo albums that he's kept my whole life and like a few decades before I was born um, where he has pictures of like he used to be a movie critic and so he has pictures of him on the set of places and when he worked for Disney and then stuff of me growing up and I mean they're all you know pretty much the regular old um, standard photo print or whatever um, Polaroid um, so and a lot of them are fading I really should scan in every page and maybe clean them up and stuff. But you know, my to-do list never gets smaller. Um, so one other thing about VidCon that is bothering me is they posted the agenda. Um, and I, f I assume it's fairly concrete the way it is now. And one thing I noticed that VidCon infuriatingly decided to do is put all the like female creator, people of color creator, LGBTQ creator, activism type panels all at the same fucking time. Like there's one lineup where all at the same time, there's a panel that's about women, um, women creators, I think women in gaming, something like that. Another one is, um, people of color, um, you know, creators. And then another one is LGBTQ, uh, creators. And like, to me, being interested in one of those things means you're probably interested in all of them. And they put all three of them at the same time. So you have to pick one. It's like, what do I value more? Women, people of color, or, or being queer or whatever. And then they did the same thing another day. They had two different panels that are both specifically about using your content to like inspire activism and, you know, raise awareness of important issues and stuff. They have two different panels about the same thing. They put them both at the same time. What the fuck, VidCon? <laughs> uh, meanwhile, you know, every single hour has panels that are like how to make the most money out of your content, how to, you know, hire influencers to make the most money. How do you make the most money? How do you grow your channel? How blah, 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 blah. Like every fucking hour. And it's just more corporatization of online content creation, which, you know, has been going on for years and years and is every year is worse. Um, but yeah, so I got my list off for meet and greet and like two or three of the people I was like, yes, like philosophy tube. I actually binge watched a whole bunch of her videos yesterday. Cause I was playing hygienier, which is a very like grindy game. Um, and I 
totally didn't really re like so I had only seen like one or two of her videos before and I thought that they were kind of dry I mean interesting because it's like about philosophical ideals and concepts and everything like that and she'll like weave you know related theories from all you know throughout human history together or whatever but I didn't feel like she really put much of herself into them um, contrast that for instance to ContraPoint who I love because she's always throwing in like scathing um, self-deprecating humor and like parodying you know extremists that she's making fun of and stuff like that um and i didn't think that philosophy to that did that but apparently like especially her older videos before she came out as you know before she came out as trans especially um she actually has philosophy tube this is actually has quite a lot of her own personal um experiences and stuff in the videos it just tends to be specifically specific videos like she has one about um, abuse and basically like being abused by her girlfriend without really realizing it until after she had broken up and just like really personal in those ones but it's like she's good at separating like this video is about this philosophical concept this video is about how I dealt you know how I experienced this other concept I don't know um, I also found out apparently that she's a big gamer so if I do win the the meet and greet um, to talk to talk to her for a few minutes I really <laughs> I want to branch into that like I still you know I still want to find more gamers more progressive gamers by which I mean like queer gamers and people of color and stuff like that who intersect the love of gaming with talking about these social justice issues um, because unfortunately the stereotype of gamers is that they're all toxic straight white men um, not even men boys um, and that is true in a lot of spaces and I don't know if it's that they're the majority but they're certainly the loudest and so I think that you know progressive gamers like me it'd be nice if we could like connect with each other and support each other and you know show that not all gamers are fucking assholes uh, at least I try not to be an asshole um, I'm sure I am often accidentally um, oh man total rant freaking Elon Musk was like posting a clip of some Twitter executive like making fun of him for having Asperger's or something and it was like it brings me back to the subject that I've I've talked about before where I know you know I am neuro neurotypical myself but I know neurotypical people who will use that as an excuse to be a fucking asshole and it's like just because you have a hard time like understanding when you're being honest doesn't mean that you know you can't ever be held accountable for saying horrible things and also like there's being honest and then there's being horrible but like calling it honesty I don't know whole other thing um but yeah so um even though Link is home you know he's he's easier than Aiden when he's sick I can just like he's playing Hydraineer right now even though he doesn't know how to read yet so I don't he's still not really playing he's just like building pipes um I can't get him into Minecraft I keep trying and he just has like no interest in Minecraft and I feel like there's just not that many games where you can build stuff that's that are accessible to kids who can't read yet. And like I always hear from parents who have kids Link's age who love Minecraft and he just doesn't have an interest in it. I don't know why. I'm bored of Minecraft, but you know, I played a lot of it back in the day. Um, there are a lot of uh, less players that are still popular that do like all these um, Minecraft videos and Roblox and stuff. And you know, when I was going through my research, I kind of watched like two seconds of it but the thing is that basically all the people at least on the feature creators list that do these games are just like kids <laughs> that are just like screaming as they play and I'm just like not my kind of video but it's like what would I even talk to them about if I did win a meet and greet with them like oh hey you play games me too yay I don't know anyway all right, I have to pee. Um, <laughs> I have to pee. I'm gonna go down and try to work on some more t-shirt designs. Um, I still have like three videos filmed that I haven't finished editing. Um, I haven't done anything with the, uh, what did I, I can't even remember what it's called. Outcast Creator Collective, there we go. I bought the website domain and I haven't put anything on it yet where the concept is, um, it's, a, it's going to be, if I can get the funding, a video host and social media platform for outcasts like me who you know get booted from all the um all the mainstream ones for being a sex worker even though I'm actually not a sex worker and the idea is that it's a place for you know you can be a sex worker you can be a nudist you can be a top free activist 
Um, you can be queer, you can be, you know, plus size, whatever. And you don't have to have experienced like insane censorship, but that's the idea. But no Nazis, <laughs> no Nazis, no conspiracy theorists, no anti-vaxxers. And that's, that's the big difference because, you know, pretty much all the places that do allow topless equality people allow everything, including Nazis and anti-vaxxers. But yeah, I don't know if there's enough people willing to actually put the money forward to pay for something like that. Um, we'll find out. I want to put together kind of a, at least a, a landing page that explains the basic concept um, before VidCon and then like maybe I can get people interested in it. I don't know. I should probably make business cards. Do I even have time for business cards? <laughs> I have my, my topless topless business cards and my Sorry Got Game to, um, business cards, so I can just encourage them to join the, you know, go to the topless topics one. Um, I'm still like nervous thinking about my elevator pitch. Like that's what, why I want to do the t-shirts because it's like a snapshot of kind of what I'm about. And then if they're curious, then I can tell them about it. Whereas if they like see it and they're like, Ugh! then I'm not going to waste my time on that person. But yeah. Okay. I got to pee. I'm going to get to work on some more. Um, designs and if you want to leave some feedback on ideas for designs um, they have to be kind of pithy as a thing it can't be like a paragraph <laughs> um, go ahead and leave it in the comments or tweet it at me um, although if Elon Musk actually does buy Twitter I'm gonna try not to use it anymore <laughs> I already quit Facebook uh, I still use Instagram just because it's like how else do I reach people I have to severely censor my posts but yeah Hard to get, hard to, hard to interact with people if you don't use any of the mainstream platforms, but as long as you're using the mainstream platforms and not the alternative ones, then the alternative ones stay dead. And so most people don't want to use them. It's catch 22. Anyway. All right. Leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know if you're going to VidCon. Let's hang out. All right. Bye.